What's going on everybody? Great to see you again. I hope that everybody is having an amazing week. Buckle up because we have some amazing real estate headlines to dive into today. So first, Architectural Digest just did a piece on nine homes around the world that seem to defy gravity. The Scarface Mansion just hit the market for $40 million. And developer Niall Niami's old house that he lived in prior to going MIA has just hit the market for $38 million just six months after this guy Mohammed Kwasi bought it off of Nile for $26 million. In today's episode, we're going to do another real estate news recap. So we're diving into all of these headlines plus a few others. And for anybody who's new around here, my name is Scott. I'm a real estate developer myself out of Arizona. So here on my channel, we cover the most interesting real estate related topics that I can come up with. Hit subscribe down below if you're into that kind of thing. I'm putting new videos out every week. All right, so I hope that YouTube doesn't have a problem with me talking about this first topic. There's a 79-year-old billionaire named John Whitaker who's trying to set up a $136 million cannabis growing facility on the Isle of Man. If you don't know where the Isle of Man is, that's okay. I didn't either. It's an island in the Irish Sea between Great Britain and Ireland. And even though it's a pretty small island, they've got a population of around 85,000 people. And just flipping through a couple of the pictures that visitors posted on Google Images, you can tell this place looks pretty great and picturesque. It's a bit of an odd location to build a cannabis farm, seeing that cannabis is not even legal for recreational use in the UK or on the Isle of Man. But their goal here would be to produce medicinal crop that would be distributed all over the world. The company who's proposing this build out is called The Peel Group. And if you look at their website, you'll see that they're a real estate investor group, which means that they will build and own the actual buildings where the cannabis is grown, but they will not personally be involved in the grow operation. The real estate investment section of the Peel Group's website says that they operate across a wide range of markets, including workspace, residential, industrial, and retail. And they have completed 13 million square feet of property in total, sitting on over 33,000 acres of land. Real estate development companies like this usually find a great piece of land. They decide what the best use is for that land. They complete all of the rezoning requirements that might need to happen on that land in order to build. They start construction and develop the property. Then they place a tenant in the newly constructed building. And at that point, they will either just hold on to the asset and collect the cash flow, or they will sell the leased property for a profit. This is a very standard real estate development model, but it will be more challenging with cannabis growing tenants because those tenants will need a license before they can even grow there. And from what I'm reading, even though sales of cannabis are likely to soar over the next couple of years, getting the necessary licenses will be easier said than Done. Surprisingly, the local residents and most of the lawmakers over at the Isle of Man have offered the developers a lot of support here. And it sounds like they're only a few months away from getting started on this $136 million unique real estate development project. And in other news, the California mansion featured in Al Pacino's popular 1983 movie Scarface just hit the market for a cool $40 million. If you've never seen the movie Scarface, you should check it out. Just make sure there's no kids in the room. Al Pacino's character, Tony Montana, was based on the mobster Al Capone, and the movie pretty much just follows the journey of Tony becoming the biggest drug lord in the state of Miami. I won't say anything else for anybody who hasn't seen the movie, but let's just say that the story was really well done. Anyways, we're here to talk about the house, so let's check out the house. The 11,500 square foot home is sitting on 10 acres of land, and when you look at the exterior, it's no wonder it was featured in a movie about a drug lord. This Mediterranean style place has over the top written all over it. As we flip through these photos, you're gonna see the huge motor court followed by what's actually a pretty modest entrance for a home of this caliber. It has a very elegant and timeless finish and furnishing package. The details that you see on the walls and the trim and the barreled ceilings are like something you'd see out of a movie or a museum. Some of the ceilings are hand painted with 24 karat gold leaf. There are seven bedrooms and 12 bathrooms inside all of which look out to the lush gardens and views, as well as a rooftop deck, which also looks out to the views and the ocean in the distance. The biggest selling point about this property from my point of view is not just the fact that it's architecturally amazing, but it is super private with no immediate neighbors in any direction and a ton of lush landscaping surrounding the estate. The guy who's selling this estate is named Pradeep Johan Gupta. He is the CEO of a private investment bank and he picked up this property in 2015 for just $12 million. Mansion Global reported that when Mr. Gupta bought the house, he actually had never even seen the movie Scarface, but he has since watched it and thought the movie was cheesy. 
Plus he goes on to say that the interior now looks nothing like the house from the film. And after I did some more digging, I realized there's a reason that the inside of this house doesn't look anything like the one from the film. It turns out that only the exterior of this Montecito mansion was seen in the movie Scarface. All of the interior shots were done in another house. Okay, so this next story from Architectural Digest is probably my favorite one of the day. They featured nine homes from all around the world that based on their style of architecture, placement, and construction methods seem to defy gravity. Now before we dive into this list together, I just wanna put it out there for anybody who's not in the construction business of how in the world homes like this are structurally possible. Most of them are built with a combination of good balance and a system called a cantilever. If you've never heard of a cantilever before, it's a rigid structural element like an I-beam or a truss that's supported strongly on one end of the structure, which is what carries the load. And then doing this creates a really cool visual effect that allows the other end of the structure seemingly to just float above ground. There are nine total homes on this list. I think numbers two and eight are my personal favorites. Let me know in the comments below which ones you like the most. Okay, so first we have this place in Melbourne, Australia. There's only one picture, but what they did here is they actually kept the old brick house in the front, and then they added this crazy addition to the back side of the house. A cool feature on this one is apparently when these shutters are closed, the homeowner can see out, but nobody can see in. Next up, we have this house in Mercia, Spain. This place is so wild, it doesn't even look real. Both these concrete sections are 65 feet long, and they're 16 feet wide, so so they're plenty spacious. It's an amazing building, but if you look over here on this side of the lot, there's just a chain link fence over there, it looks like. It's not gonna give you all that much privacy if you're living in a big glass box like this. All right, Raphael Vinoli did this next one. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of that architectural firm. They started on this one with a landscape and then they kind of built the home inside of it. Super cool looking house. I love the wood on the bottom and the black on the top. And man, is it cool how it's just surrounded with trees like that. Here we have a home in Croatia that was built with these two structural masses with a cantilever kind of shooting out at an angle, which is pretty cool. I I guess the architect on this one used this angle because he wanted the house to be in communication with the sun and the shade patterns throughout the day. Here's number eight on the list. So this is one of the ones that I said was my favorite. This place is in Poland and the architects are from Kiev. It's a contemporary home with a cantilever hanging out over the swimming pool. The house is obviously super cool, but it's just the landscape and the mountains surrounding the house that you're gonna be staring at through these windows that does it for me. We've talked a lot on this channel about some of the most wild and crazy and extravagant mega mansions around the world, but I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'd personally much rather be living in one of these houses than some 50,000 square foot mega mansion in Bel Air. Okay, so this next story is a pretty quick one, but I just had to throw it in here because it's very random and kind of made me laugh a little bit. So check it out. There's this penthouse in Palm Beach that just went up for auction this month. And get this, the house is sitting on top of the Tiffany's Palm Beach store. A company, Keen Developers, just bought the Tiffany's and they decided to turn the second level into a single five bedroom, eight bathroom home that will total 13,000 square feet when you include the staff quarters. All of the photos of the house are just renderings because I guess the inside isn't even finished yet, but they did a good job showcasing what all of the spaces of this penthouse could look like with furniture once it's finished being built. I hopped onto Google Street View. I love doing this whenever I'm scouting different properties around the world. It's almost like you're actually there. And you can't really see any of the residents from the ground level, which is good. It means the buyer of this place will have some privacy. But check out this awesome shopping district that you would have right outside your front door if you lived here. There are a ton of shops and restaurants in every direction. And to make matters even better, you're only about a half a mile from the beach. The penthouse was listed for sale for $20 million prior to the auction. No telling what it actually sold for at auction yet, but some millionaire out there just bought themselves a very unique but very cool piece of real estate. Rounding out our video today, Niall Niami's name comes up in a video yet again because the house that he used to live in just hit the market again for $38 million. The home is located at 1369 Londonderry Place in Los Angeles, and it is a crazy combination of eccentric, exquisite, and dramatic. Based on the sales history, Niall lived here probably from some somewhere around 2018 through 2021. Although it's tough to say for sure, I don't know the guy personally. You can see the house is outfitted with a ton of glass, views as far as you can see, 
meticulously selected furniture. And with all of this crazy lighting and features like bars, fireplaces, pool tables, and dark finishes, in a lot of ways it shows just like a really big bachelor pad. The Altman brothers actually sold this house for Nile back in June of 2021. It closed for $26 million at that time, which honestly seems like a bargain price if you ask me. And the nursing home mogul Mohammed Kwasi who bought this place off of Nile back then must have felt like he was getting a bargain too. Because here we are just eight months later Later, and he's trying to sell it for $38 million, which means that after commissions and everything else is paid, he's gonna walk away with like a $10 million payday if he gets his price. They're asking over $2,700 a foot for the house, which is a little high for this neighborhood. But even if he can walk away with $2,200 or $2,300 per square foot, Mr. Quasi is going to make out like a bandit on this deal. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, if you could hit that like button down below for me, that really helps my channel out a lot. And speaking of helping my channel out a lot, Lot. I also just want to give a big shout out to everybody who has become a member of my channel over the past couple of months. Being a member of my channel will give you access to some member only posts and content, but even more importantly, it really helps to support me as a creator. And I just can't express enough how much it means to me for all of you who are contributing in that way. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys this time. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, see ya.